let's take a look at the Wave 2 2022 features that have just been announced. This is my top 10 for Dynamics 365 sales, marketing and customer service. So that suite of customer engagement apps. And these are all things that we can look forward to between October of this year and March of next year. Stick with me to the end. The number one spot here is something that so many people have asked for that I am beyond delighted to see on the new release plan. Let's start here with the case swarming feature that works between the customer service application and Teams. This is part of a broader direction we're seeing across all of these customer engagement applications, which is that you're allowing people who have licenses, who work in those applications, to collaborate on that data across the rest of the organization through Teams, where they work, without having to have licenses. And this is a really important capability that goes through all of this. So what we have here is a case swarming feature. You're working on a customer service case and it's complex. You need to bring other people in from your organization. Then you can create this swarm from customer service and it comes across in Teams. And people in your organization who don't have access to Dynamics are working on it here in Teams. Now, we did see this one announced at the Business Applications launch event earlier in the year. Part of the Wave 2 release is we're getting some enhancements to this. So this creation process from the Dynamics app is going to be better. Plus, we'll be able to create notes and tasks to work on the progress of this. Next up, I've got some things around the marketing application and there's lots going on in the marketing space. So first up, we have an ability here to work across multiple brands. I see this come up a lot when I talk to customers. It's a parent company marketing on behalf of subsidiary companies or sometimes just a single company that operates under multiple brands in different regions for whatever reason that is. So that is about to get a whole lot easier. You'll be able to do this at scale. This is using the modernized business units. There's structure sitting underneath the marketing application in Microsoft Dataverse that allows you to do this. So you'll really be able to kind of control those assets that are going across the brands as well as the organizational structure of who can access what and who belongs where. I can see this one is going to get a heap of use. Also in the marketing app, we have a new lead capture form. Now, between us, <laughs> I wish we'd had this one a while ago. We have had marketing forms in the marketing application for a while, but this is getting an uplift that's well overdue. So we're going to have smart lead creation forms now that will be able to vary based on what people have put in the form in the past and all of that directly connected back into those marketing journeys and creating those leads and contacts in Dataverse. So yay. And then to wrap up this marketing section here at number seven, we are looking at personalized AI powered next best content and other suggestions. We've got to start thinking of Dynamics Marketing and Customer Insights as two halves of the marketing solution here because this one is actually bringing in Customer Insights. So Customer Insights will allow you to bring together your customer data across all the different sources. And so once you've got that richness of data, you've got a lot of information there about preferences, behaviors, all sorts of things around those customers. And then we've got some AI in there that allows you to predict what is going to be the next best thing that we should recommend to this customer. So we're seeing AI coming through the platform a lot, especially with this marketing piece, that you don't have to go in and kind of know exactly what journey you want to create, that we can start to say, all of this data, this huge amount of data we've got, let's use that to really personalize at scale. Switching gears now at number six, let's have a chat about the sales application. We have got a brand new dashboard coming and I'm loving this kind of development of new out of the box dashboards that are really rich experiences. We saw the deal manager dashboard, which is really designed for a sales management type scenario. This one is for those individual sellers to help them keep track of what's going on and help them meet their sales target. And don't we all want that to be the case? So they'll be able to go in and monitor their progress. They can see progress across accounts, contacts, leads and opportunities, key insights, relationships, conversations and so on. Also in the sales app, and this one crosses over into customer service as well, and we're starting to look now at the integration with Microsoft Teams and the other Microsoft 365 suite of products. So what we've got now is the ability to, or what we'll have shortly, the ability to at mention your Dynamics data. So you can at mention an opportunity or a contact or an account, or in fact, a customer service case, all of those things. So this is similar to the way that you can at mention one of your colleagues at the moment in a Teams chat or in Outlook. Look, you will be able to do that with your Dynamics data. <laughs> so you're basically going in and searching for something. Imagine you're emailing your boss or someone else in your organization to say, hey, just want to give you an update on this opportunity or case. 
at mention 30 widgets of this product or whatever, and it will find it in there and provide that link inside. So you're going to be able to search and link inside Outlook and Teams. At number four here, let's talk about sequences. Within the sales application, there's a capability called the Sales Accelerator. I feel like this has been under underrepresented perhaps, you actually do get some of this inside the Dynamics 365 Sales Enterprise License now. So if you haven't already had a go, it is going to be there for you. This allows you to create a series of steps and tasks and things that the seller should follow. So this is where you might have a playbook or a process of some kind, and you can set up a series of sequences that say, you know, when a new lead comes in from the website, call them within three days. And then depending on the outcome of that call, send a follow-up email and so on. And you can determine these different sequences. So there's a lot in the Wave 2 releases. There has been in the last couple of releases that are really fleshing out and growing this capability to the point now where it's absolutely awesome. In particular, what we're getting in this release that I'm excited about is that we can have tasks going to multiple sellers. This one comes up a lot, especially if we start to talk about business process or what if I want to assign different tasks to different people. So this will allow for those scenarios where you've got different sellers collaborating on things. And don't forget, if you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button. All right, top three. These are the, <laughs> these are the big ones now, and I always find it hard to separate them out. But at number three, this is around the uh, sales and marketing pieces coming together and sequences that we just talked about are coming here as well. So what we've got is this customer journey orchestration in marketing where we're going through and creating a communications journey. And as we've seen before in previous releases, we can actually do more than just marketing communications here. We can start to branch this off and create custom tasks. But what we're seeing in this release is the ability to create phone calls and tasks and things to hand off to a seller really easily inside this journey. So this fully connected sales and marketing experience or marketing and sales experience, I guess, is becoming even easier. The other part of this then is that the sequence designer is the same user interface now. So again, same skills across both things, but you can trigger a sequence from that marketing journey. Stay with me and let me take you through this. What that means is you can have a marketing journey that is emailing out to people, encouraging them to go download your white paper, let's say. When they do that, then you might want to put them on a journey to push through to sales to do a follow-up. And instead of that just being a task, and you can create a task to say, hey, salesperson, please follow this up, you can actually connect up one of these sequences that we we're just talking about that says, please call them. And then what happens as a result of that, please email them and do this. So you've actually got like a sales automated series of sequences firing off from your marketing journey. How cool is that? At number two, and make sure you stick with me for the last one, because two and one are always hard to separate here. Number two is an intelligent account or deal room dashboard. And we're back in the world of teams here. So this idea of collaborating across the sales process, and we've talked about the fact that we'll be able to leave people in the flow of their work, people in the rest of the organization can come into teams and be able to collaborate with somebody using that dynamics data. But this is a whole other level. The salesperson now can set this up in teams and we'll have this whole dashboard here that's giving to everyone involved in teams who has access to see this. So they don't have to be licensed in dynamics. They'll be able to see all of the activity that's going on, the latest account and opportunity information, customer information, sales progress, key documents centrally managed, all of this in one place. This is almost like that relationship analytics type thing, but now this is across your deal. So in terms of visibility of the deal and the collaboration on the deal, this is next level amazing. I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. And then last but certainly not least, my number one spot here. This is about being able to have the embedded teams chat in the Dynamics timeline, <laughs> yay. It's so many people asking for this. So this ability to have Teams chat embedded inside Dynamics is something that's been hugely well received, but most people struggle to get their heads around this, but they want that in the timeline. So we're seeing that coming through now. So you'll be able to track that linked chat in the timeline. You can get some notifications off that. If something gets updated, that will be in there. And you'll also be able to go directly from that conversation. So it looks to me that it's not recording every part of the chat in the timeline, but the fact of a linked chat being there and being able to access it will be part of that timeline while that's going on in Teams. So that is 
amazing <laughs> and I know a lot of people are going to be delighted to hear that. If you would like to know more about this, please check out my Beyond the Top 10 deeper dive into what's going on with the roadmap of the customer engagement applications here, or check out my Top 10 from the Wave 2 release for Power Platform. Thanks for watching.